grasping dark. I wrench from Tilo's grip. He's going to kill me this time. I smoked all his stuff last night, the stuff he told me to sell. Terror races me away on cascading adrenaline mixed with coke. He catches the back of my hair and yanks me back. I rip away again and turn to kick his shin as hard as I can. I'm not going out like this. I hide in the only place I know he won't search. Treatment a thousand miles away from Seattle, my home. I find out I'm pregnant. It's so tragic, it's funny. I'm pregnant with Tilo's baby. Crazy, but I want it. Mijo, what race is the father? The first question my dad asks, followed by that deafening kind of silence when he's black dad, punctures the air from my brother Armand's tongue. I laugh. Drugs and alcohol abuse and my baby's father have nearly killed me. My body is jacked up, toxic. This child may never be. And he's worried about color? I laugh again as tears mix with sweat, stinging my eyes, sucking my shirt to my skin. It's 120 degrees in Palm Springs. Memories choke my laughter. Suddenly, I'm nine years old. We're the only mixed family in a white neighborhood in Irvine. My dad's Mexican and my mom's white. I look more like mom. I don't like to ride with him alone in the car. I'm seared by eyes that follow our steps like clinging shadows. The whispers wad me into a ball of crumbled paper. I don't like the way we look together, although I crave his love. I want to scream, I'm his daughter, to their judgment, but some indefinable fear keeps me strangled. At school, big nose, bongo lips, the white kids chant. Get away from me, I yell back. I want to fit in, but no, I don't, so I act tough. I hate white kids. I'm rubia, or blonde, but my brother and sister son morenos. They look like they belong to dad. My baby sister, Alicia, is daddy's little girl. She's girly and delicate, whatever. I would rather wear my brother's hand-me-down jeans, a wife beater, and go dirt racing with the boys. I offend the macho, old-school Mexican mentality in which my dad and his pride are proud. Fast forward. Mom leaves dad. His love for alcohol is stronger than his love for family. I'm 14 years old. We moved to a neighborhood of color in the south end of Seattle. Lowered cars and loud bass thump through the streets. Nasty invitations follow me as I walk to school. Hey, what's up, white girl? Come to daddy, a rough voice yells from a car window. Come here, Goldilocks, screeches down my nerve endings. I thought I would blend, or better yet, be invisible here with its differing shades of brown. But no, now I'm the white girl. What are you? They ask in echoes. I'm a jumble of mismatched puzzle pieces. I speak ghetto, chola, white girl, whatever voice I need to blend in. It's French braids and backwards baseball caps in this hood. Bandanas lowered over my eyebrows in that barrio. White girl is pretty much reserved for occasional get-togethers with my mom's family. I'm 19 at a club in the barrio, in the bathroom with a chola I envy. She invites me into a stall. Music pounds against graffitied walls. Straddling the toilet seat backwards, she lines up white powder on the cold white porcelain. 
handing me a tightly rolled dollar bill, she smiles. My breath quickens, and I drown in a sea of beautiful numbness. So this is freedom. Can I have another line, please? Inhaling my liberator, I chase it with a swig of tequila and another. Fast forward. I'm 22 years old or so and live on the streets. I'm comfortable on Skid Row, hunting for cigarette butts in the gutters. Baggy, shapeless clothes hide my woman's body. My tweaky mannerisms, the effects of too much crack and too little sleep, make people cross to the other side of the street when they see me. Fear breathes beneath my surface. It's constant, like a friend, but dulled by the drugs in my blood. My temporary home is in an abandoned building. I look at my strange reflection in a puddle of water. The leaky roof drips rain. The glow of candles shimmer in small pools. Many colors of old hardened wax, polka dots on the floor around the room. A mattress sits in the corner, one lone blanket balled up in the center. Springs sprout like poison weeds on one edge. Empty liquor bottles lay strewn about and drafted wicks cast writhing shadows on the walls and ceiling, performing for an absent audience. Absorbing the lonely room and what my life has become, I whisper a prayer asking God to help me. Several heartbeats later, humility flees, chased off by the wolves of addiction. They howl and whine and tear, leaving hope mangled. I give in, shaking, kneading, picking myself up off the floor. I push away the residue of my weak prayer and head out into the night. My mind is a playground for pain, screaming at me to chug whole 40-ounce bottles of Old English so it can't think, so it can't remember. I throw it up. Another one, it shrieks, and I obey, tipping up another one, erasing straight-A report cards and black stallion adventure stories hidden on my lap under the dinner table. Fast forward. A thousand miles away in Palm Springs, my only belongings in the world are stuffed in an army duffel bag at my feet. I'm 25 years old and two months pregnant. Pastel smothered decor perfumes the sickness within the many walls of the treatment facility. I smell it anyway, knowing it all too well. Different city Yet I've been here before, in another year, another place, in another lunge at freedom. I rest my hands on my stomach, where this new innocent life dares to touch my heart, which accelerates as I remember four years before I was crouched, shivering in a doorway. It was winter in Seattle, raining, night. Blood drenched my pants, ran into my shoes, I was having a miscarriage. Regret that I had to go to the hospital and interrupt my high was the only thought that shared space with the shredding pain in my stomach. Two years after that, my water broke in a dirty hotel room. He was stillborn at five and a half months. I dealt drugs from my hospital bed for the two weeks. The doctors tried to heal my damaged body. I went back to the streets. Now, somehow, I've been given another chance. This baby feels like forgiveness. 
It doesn't matter that I have no idea what life looks like. I'm going to protect this gift. My water breaks too soon. My baby is born three months pre premature and weighs one pound, seven ounces. She's connected to, by tubes and wires to life-saving machines. She wears a little pink beanie. Her tiny hand holds my sterile gloved finger through the hole in her incubator. She graduates from a feeding tube to a bottle. Rashina is five pounds when she's released from the hospital and four months old. Dad, can my daughter and I come visit you? Sorry, no, I'm going out of town. Year one. Dad, can we see you? <laughs> Leaving town, sorry, year two. Dad? <laughs> sorry, year four. Year eight. Dad, I'm in Ensenada on a cruise. I know you live here now, and I was hoping we could meet. I'm heading out of town, but all right. Thank you. It's OK to bring your daughter, too. But this time, he really is leaving town to go to the hospital to be diagnosed with cancer. Mija, eight months later, near the end, my eight-year-old daughter sits at his bedside, her mocha-colored hand in his. Yes, Dad? I'm sorry. I love you too, Dad. And I do. Fast forward. My dad died of liver cancer, complicated with cirrhosis and hep C. My baby sister followed three years ago, unable herself to slay the demon of alcoholism. I pray they rest in peace and are dancing among laughter in the moonlight. I'm sitting on a park bench in Coronado, watching my little girl play on the swings. Moving fast, her feet tucked tight beneath her, she pulls her arms close and drops her head to build momentum. As the swing rushes back to center, she thrusts her feet forward, flinging her body back, shooting towards the sky, waving wildly at me as she flies on wings of giggles. I grin as I raise both my hands to wave wildly back. Thank you. Lisa Fields.